I welcome you all to my sixth lecture on digital signal processing for electronics and communication engineering students and electronics and computer engineering students. Today we will discuss first the use of TFT in linear filtering. In the last lecture we did, the circular convolution is quite different from linear convolution. Now we will consider an LTS system which is which may be considered an FIR filter. Let input to an LTS system be xn of length L in discrete time domain and impulse response of the system be hn of length capital M. That is sequence xn is having capital L elements and sequence hn is having capital M elements starting from 0 to M minus 1 and in xn starting from n is equal to 0 to L minus 1. Where xn is equal to 0 for n less than equal to 0 and n greater than equal to L. And hn is equal to 0 for n less than equal to 0 and n greater than equal to M. It is quite evident. The output signal sequence yn can be expressed in the time domain by using linear convolution sum formula as yn is equal to summation k running from 0 to m minus 1 hk xn minus k when l is greater than or equal to m. This means we have considered that, considered that the length of impulse response is less than length of input sequence. Usually we consider make this assumption. This linear convolution is expressed as yn hn convolved with xn. Here this sign is sign of linear convolution. Now number of elements in output sequence yn is l plus m minus 1. We all know that convolution, linear convolution time domain is multiplication of their DFTs in frequency domain. So Y capital Y EJ omega that is DTFT of YN is equal to H E ratio J omega that is DFT of DTFT of HN into this is multiplication X E ratio J omega that is DTFT of XN. Here it is multiplied. Now this is very important concept. We have done it earlier also. If the sequence Sequence x y n is to be expressed uniquely in frequency domain by samples of its spectrum y e ratio for j omega at a set of discrete frequencies. Then the number of distinct samples must be equal to or must exceed l plus m minus 1. Therefore a DFT of size capital N greater than equal to l plus m minus 1 is required to represent yn in the frequency domain. So this is the requirement. Now we will sample for to achieve DT, DFT, we will sample DTFT at omega is equal to 2 pi k by 2 pi k by n. So this will give me here y e j omega to y k x k into h k at different values of k that is k ranging from 0 to n minus 1 that is k and discrete frequencies. So now we will express input sequence xn in vector form as x vector having element x0, x1, xl minus 1 and impulse response vector h vector that is h0, h1, hm minus 1. Now to fulfill this requirement we will increase the length of both sequences x or vector x vector by zero padding here i am padding making zero padding of by inserting m minus one zeros and here i have increased the length of h by inserting l minus one appending l minus one zeros here so now the dimension of both vector is one cross n The increase in the size of sequences does not uh, alter their continuous spectra x omega and h omega as the sequences are aperiodic and as n is greater than very very greater than l and l is greater than equal to m. 
Now y k is equal to x k into h k, and when I will take its i d f t, that is, by taking n points, and when n is equal to l plus m minus one, it will give me y n, which is output of linear convolution. It implies that n point circular convolution, that is, when n is equal to l plus m minus one. It implies that n is equal to l plus m minus one point circular convolution of x n and h n is equivalent to the linear convolution of x n and h n when length of sequence is x n and h n is increased to n point by following that zero padding procedure. Here we have done zero padding to make the length n plus l l plus m minus one here l plus m minus one so both sequences are of equal length. Example: Determine the response of an LTA system, bracket F I filter, with impulse response H n to the input sequence X n, where H n is equal to one, two, three, four. Here, this arrow indicates n is equal to zero, and X n is equal to one, two, two, one. Here, arrow shows n is equal to zero. Length of H n is capital M is equal to three, and length of X n is capital L is equal to four. So, it is very clear. Or we can clearly show that the linear convolution of x n and h n will produce a sequence of length capital N is equal to l plus m minus one. That is six. That is six. In the field of signal processing, we usually prefer capital N as a power of two. However, it is preferred that the length capital N is a power of two. So we will choose nearest one. That is two raised to the power three is equal to eight. Therefore, we choose n is equal to eight for DFT and IDFT operations. Now, in case one, when we have chosen n is equal to eight, x k, that is DFT of x n is summation n running from zero to seven, x n e raised to the power minus j two pi k n by eight equal to one minus one plus two e raised to the power minus j two pi k by eight. And this, so on. This is the expression, final expression. And similarly, from H n, I can calculate H k equal to summation n running from zero to seven. H n e raised to one minus j two pi k n by eight. And by expansion of this summation, I will get this term. Now, what I need to do after getting these two expressions, these as shown, I am going to calculate X k at different values of k. So, X k at k is equal to zero is six. Similarly, I will get capital X one. X k at k is equal to two is minus one minus iota. Similarly, I will calculate capital X three. Capital X k at k is equal to four is zero. Similarly, I will calculate X five, X six, and X seven. And now, capital H k is calculated by capital H k at k is equal to zero is six. And like H one is calculated. H k at k is equal to 2 is minus 2 minus 2 iota, and like this, capital H 3, H 4, H 5, H 6, and H 7 are calculated. And I suggest you that please verify these terms at your places, whether I am right or wrong. Now I have used the sub subscript 8 to indicate that I have kept capital N is equal to 8. So y 8 k, how I will determine y 8 k? By using this formula for a particular value of k x k h k, so y at zero is six, x zero into x zero six into six thirty six, and similarly y at one is x one and h one, y at two is x two into h two, and y three at three, y at four, y at five, y at six, and y at seven is determined. I suggest you please verify at your places. Do yourself. I have done it here. You verify the result. The corresponding eight point IDFT is calculated as just conventional formula. Y eight n is equal to one by eight summation k running from zero to seven. Y eight k e is for j two pi k n by eight for n is equal to zero one to seven. Now in this way, I am substituting the values of n here in this formula. And y 8k from here, and calculate y 8n. 
and it is coming out to be a sequence 1, 4, 9, 11, 8, 3, 0, 0 in discrete time domain. Now look at the answer. Here two zeros at the end is due to zero padding. How many zeros I have added here? I have added two zeros to make it from six to eight. So additional two zeros are there in the output. Now, if somebody asks you to do this question as a conventional circular convolution approach, then what will be the capital N? The capital N is chosen as force. 4 that is n is maximum l comma m l is 4 m is 3 so we choose 4 now x k is equal to 1 plus 2 e raised power j 2 pi k by 4 plus 2 e raised power minus j 2 pi k 2 by 4 plus 1 e raised power minus j 2 pi k 3 by 4 and from this i will calculate x k at k is equal to 0 is 6 and x k at k is equal to 1 is equal to minus 1 minus j and x k at k is equal to 2 is equal to 0 and x k at k is equal to 3 is equal to minus 1 plus iota. Similarly, capital H k is equal to 1 plus 2 e raised power minus j 2 pi k by 4 plus 3 e raised power minus j 2 pi k 2 by 4 equal to 1 plus 2 e raised power minus j k pi by 2 plus 3 e raised power minus j pi k. Now we will calculate h0 that is h k at k is equal to 0 is equal to 6 from this formula and I will calculate h1, h2, h3. Now for calculating y4, 4 is the subscript showing a capital N in DFT is 4. So y40 is calculated as y x0 into h0 that is 6 into 636 and y41 as x1 into h1 is equal to iota 4 x y 4 2 is equal to x 2 and h 2 is equal to 0 and like 3 like this y 4 3 is minus iota 4 now corresponding to 4 point idft i will apply this formula y to calculate y 4 n that is 1 by 4 summation k running from 0 to 3 y 4 k e raised power j 2 pi k n by 4 for n 0 1 2 3 and when I will expand, I will substitute these values here from this to this, I will get this expression. Now what I need to do, I just substitute value of n here and calculate y4n. So y4n is coming out to 9, 7, 9, 11 and origin at this point in discrete time domain. Now for analysis of two cases, now we now compare the result of y8n obtained by using 8 point DFTs with sequence y4n which was obtained by using 4 point DFTs as conventional approach. So case 1 output is y8n is equal to 1, 4, 9, 11, 8, 3, 0, 0. So these two zeros are due to zero padding. So I, we are interested in these six terms that is l plus m minus 1 is equal to 6. So y6n is 1, 4, 9, 11, 8, 3. This is actually output of linear convolution. That is L plus F minus 1. These are six terms. Now, conventional circular convolution approach gives y4n 9, 7, 9, 11. 9, 7, 9, 11. Now looking, I have encircled these two terms. Why? We observe that y4, 0 is equal to y60 y60 and y64 that is 8 is added to 1 here 8 is added to 1 and this is 9 and y41 this term is equal to y61 plus y65 so this term 3 is added to this 4 and gives 7. So only first two points that is m minus 1. m minus 1 is 2 here. So m minus 1, two terms are corrupted by the effect of aliasing. Comparing the output of linear convolution here and linear convolution which has been calculated through circular convolution by keeping capital N is equal to L plus m minus 1 and here is direct circular convolution 
that is by keeping capital n is equal to 4 i will compare both results now y40 is not equal to y60 y41 is not equal to y61 but these two terms are same so it is very clear apparent that first m minus 1 term will be aliased so if you go for linear convolution this is the output if you go for circular convolution directly this is the output so linear convolution output is not same as circular convolution output time domain aliasing effects are evident when we use n less than l plus m minus 1 in above scenario so once more i repeat that here this is calculated by circular convolution but this is equal to linear convolution because we have kept n is equal to l plus m minus 1 in circular convolution here in the conventional approach i have selected n maximum bracket l comma m that is 4 so this is conventional circulated circle circular convolution approach and in both cases i have calculated all the results through dft idft method but it is clear that conventional linear convolution approach is different from circular convolution approach but both are same when n is equal to l plus m minus 1 so always remember if you want to calculate linear convolution through circular convolution then n should be greater than or equal to l plus m minus 1 otherwise aliasing will be observed now frequency analysis of signals using dft for that let's do it by using an example as given below consider an exponential signal x a t is equal to e raised to minus t for t greater than or equal to zero uh, it's a causal signal and zero for t less than zero is sampled at a rate f is equal to 25 samples per second and a block of 125 samples is used to estimate the spectrum determine the spectral characteristics of the signal x a t by computing the dft of fine finite duration sequence compare the spectrum of the truncated discrete time signal to the spectrum of the analog signal now first we will make the spectrum of analog signal that is spectrum of analog signal is calculated as we have done this is by ctft x j omega this is this omega is angular frequency in continuous time domain that is coming out to be 1 over 1 plus j omega if i will take its ctft e is one minus t for t greater than or equal to 0 and 0 for t less than 0 i will get x j omega that is ctft of x a t that is equal to 1 over 1 plus iota omega now x a f that is instead of omega i have substituted 2 pi f f is frequency in hertz in continuous time domain now magnitude spectrum this magnitude x a f is giving will give us magnitude spectrum so the magnitude is calculated to be 1 by square root 1 plus 2 pi f square this is very simple we have done it in signal and systems also now the exponential analog signal sampled at the rate of 25 samples per second results in a sequence xn i have sampled it x a n t e raised to minus n t so here t is sampled at e raised to minus t t is n t and t e raised to minus n t we have done it in sampling also t here fs is 25 so t is 1 by fs that is e raised to minus n 1 by 25 or n greater than or equal to 0 and we will reach at this expression the therefore consider the following sequence now this is x cap n bracket 0 0.9608 raised to n for 0 
and lying between 0 to 124. Why? Because it is given in question that a block of 125 samples is used to estimate the spectrum. So I will choose length of sample block to be capital L is equal to 125. So it is L minus 1 is equal to 124. So N is running from 0 to 124. Here, there, if you look at this, in this sequence, N is running from 0 to infinity. N can be increased to infinity. But in the question, he has, the author has restricted us to a block of 125 samples. So N should be 0 to 124. And this is how X cap N is actually truncated sequence with window function of length L is equal to 125. And here rectangular window is used. Means I have truncated it. I have chosen only first 125 samples. That is sample number 0 to sample number 124 here. So from Xn, I have chosen only first 125 samples starting from n is equal to 0 to a 124 and formed a new sequence x cap n. Now the n point DFT of L is equal to 125 points is x cap k is equal to L running from 0 to n minus 1 x cap n e raised to minus j 2 pi l k by n k running from 0 to n minus 1. Now l we know that n is greater than l but as l is smaller than capital N so the limit is going to be from l 0 to capital L minus 1 x cap n e raised to minus j 2 pi k l by n L running from 0 to 124, x cap n, e to minus j 2 pi k L by n. To obtain the sufficient details in the spectrum, we keep n as we have considered capital N much greater than capital L. So I choose here 256. So use zero padding concept here. The magnitude spectrum plots are as follows. I will first plot XAF. So this is XAF. Here frequency is varied from 0 to 30 hertz, 0 to 30 hertz, and this is the spectrum X of XAF, 0 to 30. Okay. Now spectrum of X cap K. Now in the first case, I have chosen L is equal to 125. Look at the spectrum. Here, this portion, 0 to 30 hertz. We are going like this. The spectrum is, the magnitude XAF is following this pattern. And looking at this, when N is equal to 256 and block length of samples is 125, it is also following the same pattern. And symmetrical about K by K is equal to N by 2 k is equal to n by 2. It is symmetric about k is magnitude spectrum is symmetric about k is equal to n by 2. Now what happens if I will choose l is equal to 25. If the window function rectangular of length l is equal to 25 is selected then window function means rectangular window means I am choosing only first 25 samples from this sequence starting from n is equal to 0 to 24. So here this is the formula and running from 0 to 24. So I have reduced the window size and the spectrum will look like this. So this spectrum is matching with this. But this spectrum is not matching this. Here main lobe is a little bit wider and there are sinusoidal variations. So what is the observation? It may be inferred from the magnitude spectrum for n is equal to 26 point DFT as shown above that the sinusoidal and valve variations in the spectrum 
away from the main peak are due to the large side lobes of the rectangular window spectrum for L is equal to 25. This sinusoidal variations are there. So there is a mismatch between the both. This is in continuous time domain. This is in discrete domain. DFT. Magnitude spectrum through DFT. But this is matching with this. When n is equal to 256 and sample block, sample, uh, length of block of samples is more, L is equal to 125. So eventually the DFT for L is equal to 25 is no longer a good approximation of the analog signal spectrum. However, for L is equal to 125, the magnitude spectrum, magnitude XK bears is close resemblance to the spectrum of the analog signal as shown here. This pattern is like this in continuous domain. When XAF magnitude spectrum is plotted and when DFT in DF through DFT magnitude spectrum is plotted, it is quite similar pattern. But when L is low, that is 25, there is a strong mismatch. So this case is okay. So keep L larger. So it depends on the block length of samples and the type of window also. In few, uh, in next lectures, I we will discuss the importance of window and how many samples should be taken. And we will do it in next lectures. But this example gives a clear picture that we can approximate magnitude spectrum through DFT. So it's very easy to calculate, but we need to be careful about the choice of window and what is the value of capital L. So I finish my lecture here and that's all for the day. Thanks for attending this session on DSP. See you in next lecture. And for this course on digital signal processing, you need to follow these reference books. And for self-study, you can purchase one or two books of your own choice from this list. Thank you.